Good morning from Policing TV. I'm here at the Police Superintendents Association conference and delighted to uh, be joined by Sir Andy Marsh, who is the Chief Executive Officer, CEO, I think that's right, of the College of Policing. So, Andy, quite a day for the College in that uh, we're recording this on a day that there are announcements to be made. Can you tell us something about those announcements? Yeah, we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to be hearing from the policing minister about our programme to professionalise neighbourhood policing. Now, what, what we know um, from a solid evidence base over decades is that the foundation of trust and confidence in policing, particularly locally, is neighbourhood policing. And the question for the public is, are the local police tackling the issues of crime and antisocial behaviour that matter most to me? And if they're not... It's a very significant diminishing of the trust and confidence and their feelings of personal safety. We know that neighbourhood policing um, suffered um, through years of austerity and some forces more than others. And this programme, which I'm thrilled is being supported by the policing minister, will actually give the numbers on the ground, which is one part of the solution, the skills and the knowledge with the lightest of touch to make sure that they uh, are able to um, bring maximum impact uh, to bear as possible on cutting crime locally. So the uh, policing minister is here at the conference and will speak a little later on. Um, she will uh, mention, uh, maybe even announce this uh, provision. What then can uh, others do, those viewing this, do in order to learn more about what is proposed, what is going to happen, how they can get involved? So the professionalising neighbourhood policing programme is at levels one to four. Level one is for everyone in policing. Level two is where uh, the rubber really hits the track. That's at um, uh, PC and uh, PCSO level. Level three is sergeant and inspector. Level four is the, is the local police area or BCU equivalent commander. We're piloting these courses across 11 forces at the moment. Um, that, that pilot will conclude in April, at which point, because of the announcement we've heard today, We'll be reshaping that programme and we'll be injecting it into policing in a way that we really, really will transform neighbourhood policing. So this is something that will go into those 11 forces in pilot uh, initially, then will be subject to the pilot results rolled out, maybe fine-tuned fine uh, according to those, those findings. Uh, is there learning here, do you think, for the wider international community uh, about uh, the renewed uh, focus, interest, that UK policing... Uh, will be having on neighbourhood policing? Well, um, you asked me a question about how people can learn more. Have a look at our website. There's so much on there from the practice bank to the What Works site on crime reduction and specific detail about this programme, um, which is significantly led by Andy Sidebotham. Um, he's our superintendent, seconded from uh, GMP. Now, we're, we're always hesitant to signpost this is what others should learn from what we're doing, and we're always keen to learn from them. Well, might rather than should. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's always uh, possible. You'll know my, my um, campaigning for learning from good and excellent practice elsewhere yeah. in the world. So I'm rather hoping that this is going to be good and excellent practice that might provide some, some assistance to others. Yeah, if, if, if um, uh, I was to be asked... Well, tell me then, what are the things that we think policing in England and Wales is amongst the best at? I think uh, some of the things that uh, colleagues might say is, I think we're pretty good at um, police use of firearms, and firearms officers actually have about 120 hours of professional training and accreditation years, a year. They say public order, um, and increasingly um, start to talk about um, other forms of policing. Um, so our detective training, PIP 1 to 4. Now, we, we've heard for several years that this area of policing is neglected. In fact, the current policing minister, Dame Diana Johnson, when she was uh, chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee, said neighbourhood policing should be a specialism and officers and staff should be trained to deliver it. This, this um, programme of uh, professionalisation of neighbourhood policing is, it, is it intended to fast-track the learning to help those neighbourhood teams become much more quick, effective much more quickly. And I, I would encourage uh, people colleagues from around the world to have a look at this program um, not least of which because they might say well that's great but you've forgotten to put xyz in but um the other the other lesson for colleagues around the world is don't run neighborhood policing down you know we've really suffered because of that it's one of those areas that you might think well that's discretion or that's value added it's not it's a foundation and a bedrock of any model that relies on policing by consent 
I'm delighted to hear this renewed interest that uh, the College of Policing and UK Policing is showing in neighbourhood policing uh, with, with your leadership and support of your, your college team, uh, Andy. Very much looking forward to reading the detail myself in due course, and hopefully Policing Insight and Policing TV will be able to cover this in more detail uh, as those pilots progress and as it's rolled out. It's my pleasure, Bernard, as ever. Good to speak, Sir Andy. Thank you very much indeed.